Dear American students, my name is Matali Mishra. Matali, my first name, means friendship. The program you are about to see is about friendship and understanding. I live in India, which is on the other side of the world from you. I wish we'd live closer so we could get to know each other. Perhaps we would become friends. India is a vast land with people of many different cultures and religions. Some live in cities, but most live in the countryside. India has a rich culture, but also has big problems of poverty and overpopulation. I think you will understand us better by learning about how we live. Since we live many thousands of miles apart, I would like to share some of my everyday experiences with you through these photographs. I know some of them will seem unusual or maybe even strange, but please try to understand that although my life is different from yours, there are many things we share in common. I am very fortunate. My family has many things that many other families in India do not. I hope you will find opportunities to learn about how some of the other families of India live too. Let me introduce my family. My father, Navin Mishra, is deputy director of an electronics testing laboratory. My mother, whose name is Palmaja Mishra, has a college degree but chooses to be a housewife. My brother, Mahim, is 12. He goofs around a lot, but is a smart boy. My sister, Meghna, is eight. And this is my very best friend, Sujarta, who lives in the apartments across from us. We live in New Delhi, which is the capital city of India. It is a large city with more than nine million people. This is my apartment building. It is owned by the government. We pay 450 Indian rupees a month. This is about 45 American dollars. Our apartment has a kitchen, a bathroom, a bedroom, and a living room, which also serves as a bedroom for my parents. This is my city early in the morning. Almost everybody is still asleep. The sun is just coming up. It is springtime and it is quite warm here. Our winter is best because it is cool but never gets very cold. My father and mother wake up at 6.30 a.m. and get each of us up. When I get up, I wash and brush my teeth. My mother helps comb my hair. Then she fixes my lunch while I get dressed and put my night clothes away. I don't usually eat much breakfast. I just have a glass of milk. Today, I'll need some money to buy socks at school. When my mother gives it to me, I put the money in my pencil box. Then I pack my book bag while my sister gets ready for school. Since we live on the fourth floor, my parents can watch as I go to the elevator. It's only a short walk to the bus stop. I am in fifth grade at Springdale School. My brother goes to St. Columbus School. He's in sixth grade. My sister goes to Siv Nikitan School. The schools we attend are private. They teach English, and are considered to be good. We also learn Hindi, which is our native language. My mother and father pay from 100 to 300 rupees a month for our education. That would be 10 to 30 dollars in your country. Most children in India go to the public schools which are free. I meet my friends at the bus stop. I like to talk with them while we wait. 
The school bus comes down Kastruba Gandhi Marg, which is my street. There we get on. The bus is crowded and noisy. My friend Sharda and I talk and laugh a lot. Sometimes we play hot cross buns. You will notice in India, we drive on the left side of the road. The driver sits on the right-hand side of the bus. There are many colorful sights and lots. We pass many interesting places like Lakshmi Naryan Temple and the main post office. We see many types of vehicles. The noises they make are exciting but sometimes get tiresome. Each type has a different horn, bell, or buzzer, so everyone knows what is coming from behind. Although New Delhi is a very large city, we still have some means of transportation used in the countryside. As we drive along, we see many sights of everyday life. People are on their way to work in offices and factories and construction sites. I like to watch for new movie billboards. They are colorful and exciting. My favorite movie stars are Paveen Babi and Kishore Kanar. Once in a while, I go to the movies with my mother. My father doesn't approve of movies, so he doesn't go with us. My father leaves for work after we have gone to school. My brother, Mahim, is staying home today. He says he's sick, but he doesn't seem very sick to me. I think he's just taking a day off. The research center where my father works is near our apartment building, so he can come home for lunch. We have a car, but he rides his bike to work to save gas. On the way, he passes people selling things by the roadside. This is a man selling a special treat that Indian adults enjoy chewing. It's made of betel nuts wrapped in betel leaves with spices and herbs. Father completes his ride to work, parks his bike, and goes inside. I have never been inside my father's workplace, and I wonder what it is like. At about the time my father is arriving at work, our bus arrives at Springdale School. As I get off the bus, I see many more of my friends. The school building is very large and has almost 3,000 students in classes from preschool through the 12th grade. It is a famous New Delhi school with a long waiting list of students who want to attend. I am lucky to get to attend here. Most students come from well-to-do families. This morning, like every day, the students stand around waiting for opening exercises. This is the upper school. The little children go to another building. The older students are taking exams this week. The exams are very important because they are used to decide who will be promoted to the next class and later who will go to which college. I won't have to take these exams until next year. It's time. We do some physical exercises before we file into class. As I unpack my books, the other students come into class. There's a lot of noise with kids talking and laughing. But when the teacher comes in, we must stand, get quiet, and say, good morning. This seems very formal, but we are used to it, and our teacher, Ms. Sharma, is very friendly. I think she is beautiful, too. We have a busy schedule with many subjects, such as math, Hindi language, English, social studies, and science.
We also have special classes of music, art, folk dancing, and PE. We go to school six days a week, but Saturday for only half a day. Today we start with English. We write in a journal and study English grammar. Even though we have a large class, Ms. Sharma tries to help each of us. Here she tells me how I can do better on my writing. Writing in Hindi, which is our official national language. You will notice the letters are very different from your letters used in English. It may look strange and difficult to you, but we are used to it and we find English writing more difficult. Next, we have social studies. Here we are doing map work. We must stand to give answers and always use complete sentences. Ms. Sharma asked some of us to show where cities in India are located on the map. We are always proud when we get a right answer. We take a recess break and play jump rope. We turn the rope fast and always laugh when we trip up. The recess always seems too short. After our morning break, part of our class goes to the library. I read a lot in my spare time. Picking the right book isn't always easy. Sometimes it is fun just to read magazines. When it is, I must get permission to go to the school office to buy socks. The ladies are very nice but they tease me about how big my feet are getting. I laugh and blush a little. Next, I get measured for my new uniform. My school has tailors and they make our outfits right here. Boys and girls all over India wear uniforms to school, even in the government schools. At least we don't worry about what to wear to school. At last, it is lunchtime. First we wash up and get a drink of water. Here is the kitchen of the school cafeteria. The cooks squat on the floor to prepare the food. My friends and I don't like the school food, so we eat our lunch from home. We sit on the playground and chat while we eat. Some boys are nearby. They yell little insults at us, but we ignore them. That's just the way boys are, I guess. By the way, the boy with the red scarf on his head is a member of the Sikh religion. He will never cut his hair and must always keep it covered. When he grows up, he will always wear a turban. We play a clapping game after we finish eating. This game goes faster and faster and when you miss you are out. We don't have a long lunch break and we talk a little before we go back to class. After lunch we have math and then Miss Sharma has a special activity for us in science. She selects some of us to watch and time the burning rates of candles made of different kinds of material. Then we compare what we found and try to figure out why there were differences. It is fun to learn this way instead of always out of a book. Now I would like to share some special classes we have. These activities are fun, but unfortunately we don't have them every day. Here, our music teacher comes to class to teach us to sing. We learn a lot of songs while he accompanies us on the instrument, which is a little like an accordion. He asks me to sing in front of class. I always get a little embarrassed. Once a week, we go to folk dancing class. Here, 
we learn dances and songs of traditional India. The drummer teaches us to clap in rhythm and then keep the beat as we dance. In the spring, we will put on a program for our parents. Another special activity is our yoga class. It is outside and we first have to take off our shoes. They all look alike, so we have to be careful to get the right ones. In this class, we must do just what the teacher says. She's very particular. We stretch and stretch and follow her directions. This is the lotus position. I can't get my foot tucked in and get scolded a little. Anyway, it is hard to do all that in a skirt. Only the boys wear shorts. That seems a little silly to me. We even have arts and crafts once in a while. There we make designs by curling strips of paper and pasting them to paper. Our art teacher also teaches us to paint. I don't think I'm very good at this, but some of my friends are excellent artists. Twice a week we go to PT. PT stands for physical training. I think you call it PE. Today we choose up sides and play a game that is like drop the handkerchief. You must run hard or you'll get caught. Well, that's about all the things we do at school. At the end of the day, we all rush to the bus. I like school, but after a long day, I look forward to going home at 3 o'clock. The bus ride home takes about an hour. While I am at school, my mother and our servant, Nina, cleans the house and do other chores. Our servant, Mina, comes from a very poor family. She earns only 300 rupees or $30 a month. There are many poor people in India and most middle class families have one or more servants. Mina helps my mother sweep, clean, and wash dishes. Here is our neighbor's servant carrying drinking water. We have running water, but it sometimes makes us sick, so we get pure water from a shop or boil tap water. Every day Mina comes to this milk depot to get fresh milk. Everybody must bring their own container. When I arrive home, my mother and I go shopping. We buy some bread at the little sidewalk shop on the ground level of our building. This man makes his living selling vegetables and a few other groceries from this spot. We don't have supermarkets in India. But when my mother wants to buy a lot of food, we go to a larger open market. One market we go to is an old deli and has been operating for many hundreds of years. We can buy most everything here. It's crowded and bustling. Bicycle rickshaws will take you down the narrow streets. People sell fresh fruits and vegetables and a lot of other food. Trucks bring in fresh fish that are sold at the market, too. You can even buy a live chicken and have it cut up. Or buy baby chicks. Or you might want to buy noodles or cookies. You might be surprised, but you can even have a tooth pulled by a sidewalk dentist. If you look carefully behind this man with a basket on his head, you will see what we call a beggar's restaurant. 
The squatting men are waiting for their turn to eat. Passers-by give money to the cooks. They feed the hungry unemployed people. My father always makes a donation. There are also modern shops in downtown Delhi, where we buy many other things. After shopping and before I go out to play, I sometimes talk to my mother about school and personal things. As we chat, my mother asks me about what I would like to do when I get older. Parents seem to always worry about the future. I really don't know what I want to become because it seems so far off. Maybe a teacher, I tell her. Then I ask about how we will choose a husband for me. You see, in India, marriages are arranged by parents. In fact, if we lived in a village, my husband might have already been picked out for me. When I ask my mother, laughs and says, don't worry, there is plenty of time, and I'm sure we will pick someone just right for you. Then Meghna comes up and butts in, because she wants some attention too. I often play with my sister. Here, we are skating on the landing in front of our apartment. Meghna likes to be pulled. Father comes home while we are playing soccer on the play yard by our building. It's really hard to keep up with the ball. I want to ride my bike, but I need my father's help to straighten the wheel. Good. It is fixed, so off I go. All three of us children have bikes, and we are very fortunate. We take very good care of them. I wish I could just play all afternoon, but I usually have two or three hours of homework, so I must do some before I help my mother with dinner. I must write and read. Luckily, I don't have any math today. Each of us kids must study. We have a quiet time but Mahim often disturbs me. It's evening now, and while we are visiting and messing around, Mother has started dinner. Nina, our servant, has gone home, so we must do all the cooking. Tonight, we will make mutton curry, which is a spicy stew of ground lamb. We also have vegetables, like cauliflower, tomatoes and potatoes. We have natural yogurt almost every day. Most Indian people are vegetarians and don't eat meat. No one in India eats beef because to Hindus cows are sacred and it is illegal to kill them. As my mother cooks, sometimes my father tastes the food and gives her advice. This makes her a little angry, but mostly they are just kidding. I get to taste the cooking too, because my mother wants me to learn to season foods just right. She also wants me to learn how to make chapatis, which is Indian flatbread, and is made for almost all meals. First she makes the dough and then rolls it out. Then I get my turn. I'm not too good at it yet, but Mother is patient with me. Next, we fry it in a pan. Then Mother holds it over the open flame to puff it up, and it is ready to eat. It's almost 8.30 and time to eat. We children get to eat first. The food is delicious. We eat with our fingers. Most people in India do. My friend Sujarta and her mother are eating with us tonight, 
After we finish, the adults will eat. We are a modern family, so men and women eat together. But in most of India, men and women eat separately. While mother is straightening up the kitchen, father lights some incense. We are a family of the Hindu religion, but we don't follow it closely and don't go to the temple very often. In this, we are quite different from most people in India who are very religious. My mother teases my father about lighting the incense and says it is the only thing he does to be a good Hindu. My father just smiles. With supper finished and my bath completed, father decides to read to us. Sujarta joins us as we sit on the bed and listen. You may know the story. It is the Greek myth of the Trojan horse. I like my father's deep voice. He makes this strange story come to life. Now it is time for bed. Some evenings I like to watch as the sun goes down on New Delhi and the lights come on. And I realize how many people live in my city. Inside again, I brush my teeth and pin up my hair. It's dark now and we all turn in. All three of us sleep on the same bed. As I fall off to sleep, I wonder what life is like for other children in India and the rest of the world. Since on Saturday we only have a half day of school, we have time to just relax in the afternoon. Mahim sticks his tongue out at me and we push each other a little. He can be such a pest. Mother says to stop, so we decide to play chess. He usually wins, but I'm learning to make it harder for him to beat me. The afternoon is warm, so father takes us to buy some ice cream. We stop at a vendor near the war memorial to Indian soldiers. The man who serves us is a Sikh. We have ice cream bars and popsicles. They are cool and so refreshing on this warm spring day. In the late afternoon, we have some time to goof around. Meghna and I play with some balloons and laugh when we let the air out of them. It makes a vulgar sound. My mother disapproves. Mahim likes to listen to modern Indian music and American music on his tape player. My father says he thinks it is just noise. As we sit around and talk, my father has a cigarette and tea, and we get snacks. Mother doesn't like father smoking, so he doesn't do it very often. We bring out the family photo album and look at the pictures. We laugh at how we looked as babies. Then Mahim finds my school report, and we talk about how I'm doing. I get pretty good grades, but my goal is to get all A's. We have a TV, but it is an old black and white and is broken. We go to our neighbors to watch an Indian movie. The only station we get is government run, and they only show one movie a week. The movies are full of action and romance, but the government strictly censors the films and no kissing is allowed. You may be surprised to learn that India produces more movies than any other country in the world. After the movie, we will have to go to bed. As I told you before, father doesn't approve of movies, so he goes to watch a bridge game in another apartment. It's Sunday 
and our only full day of rest and relaxation. We are going on an outing to Lodi Gardens. It's a beautiful place and everyone is anxious to get started. We go down to the parking lot where our car is kept. Having a car in India is very exceptional. They are made in our country and are very expensive to buy and to operate. So we only use it on special occasions. Sujarta is coming with us, so it is very crowded. We load up and are off. Lodi Gardens is very lovely this time of year. The ancient monuments and paths are surrounded by beautiful bougainvillea bushes with their brilliant flowers. Soon the weather will change and become hot and dry until the monsoons come in July. We arrive at the gardens and begin to play. My brother wants to play cricket and frisbee, but we mostly run around and play tag. Then someone says, let's race. I went easily because Mahim isn't around. The park has pools and flowers. I splash in the water. Mahim catches a baby fish and father explains how it breathes in the water. The gardens have big monuments that are in ruin. They were built in the 1700s by the Emperor Lodi as tombs for his family. They are great to play on. We hide and laugh when we jump out and surprise each other. While we're running around, we come across some cows grazing among the monuments. Even though they are loose, they are watched by a herdsman. Many people from other countries have criticized us for treating our cows as a sacred part of our religion and don't understand why we don't eat beef. My father explains that if we kill and eat the cows, we would lose a great deal because villagers use them for plowing and hauling. Their milk is for everyone, their dung is used for fertilizer, and as a main fuel for heating and cooking in villages where most of our people live. So you see, we have good reasons besides religion for protecting cows. My mother calls and says it is time for a snack. We have bananas and oranges by the pool with the lovely flowering bushes all around us. Here is where I would like to say farewell. We are a happy family. I hope you enjoyed your visit with me. I also hope you learned some things that will help you understand our way of life. There is a lot more to know about India. If we lived closer, I could teach you more and perhaps we could become friends. Namaste, my friends. This is our way of saying, may peace and happiness be with you.